scientists, let's talk about Earth's resources. All resources can be sorted into two main categories, renewable or non-renewable resources. Renewable resources are all of the resources that can be cycled or replaced in one human lifespan. These include things like water, plants, air, wind, animals, soil, and sunlight. Non-renewable resources are all of the resources that cannot be replaced during one human lifespan. These are things that took thousands of years to develop, like ore, both metal and non-metal, and fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas. Since the amount of these non-renewable resources is very limited, it is vital that we conserve them for future generations. A big way that we can help conserve non-renewable resources, like natural gas, coal, and oil, is to reduce their use and replace our non-renewable resource consumption with renewable resources. Every day, more and more things are starting to use electricity produced by two infinite and inexhaustible resources, sunlight and wind. Solar panels have been around since the 1950s, but they have come a long way in becoming more effective, cheaper to make, and having a longer lifespan than the first models. Solar panels of today can be used to power cities, your house, or even just your cell phone. Wind turbines have been around for even longer and date back to the late 1880s, but they have just recently become a popular electrical energy source. Wind farms are home to hundreds of wind turbines and can make a lot of clean and renewable energy really effectively. Let's change tracks for a second and focus on one of our renewable resources, soil. Soil is a vital aspect of replacing several other renewable resources like plants and animals on farms and ranches. There are five different types of soil. We have humus, sand, silt, clay, and loam. But humus, pronounced humus, is completely different than the rest because it's actually dead and decomposing bits of plants and leaves. Sand, silt, and clay are all bits of dirt and rock, but they have different sizes and properties. Sand is made up of larger bits of weathered rock. It's the largest particle. Sand holds very little water, and this keeps the sand particles from clumping together, and it allows plants to grow quickly due to ease of root growth. But since it doesn't retain water well, the plants end up not thriving and they die. Sand is generally yellowish brown or tan and feels rough and gritty in between your fingers. The next largest is silt. Silt is much smaller than sand because it's made up of smaller rock and mineral particles. It retains water much better than sand, but it still allows the water to eventually drain off. Silt feels much more smooth than sand, but it'll still fall through your open fingers. It is generally a brownish red color and a lot darker than sand. It's more fertile than sand and retains a good amount of water. This makes it the best single type of soil for plant growth. Clay is the finest type of soil. Since the particles are so small, they pack together and they don't allow for much air or water to penetrate or to escape. Clay feels very sticky and slippery when it's wet and will make a ball and hold its shape when rolled between your fingers. Clay also comes in a wide variety of colors from dark blackish brown to red and even mustard yellow. Clay isn't very good for plants though because it's too packed tight for roots to grow and since it doesn't drain water well, it allows the roots to rot. It doesn't readily absorb water when it's dry and cracked out, which also prevents plants from thriving. The last type of soil is loam. This is a perfect mixture of sand, silt, clay, and humus. Loamy soil is ideal for plant growth and for water retention. Let's take a look at a question. 